Hello and welcome to Present Times on Linux. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a distro, or rather a BSD, and it is TrueOS. So I downloaded TrueOS from their website, trueos.org, and I've made a virtual box image up for it with uh, four gig of RAM and two processors and a 16 gig hard drive which he actually recommended when I was making the uh, virtual box manager so I'll just let it carry on anyway we'll start it off uh, we'll just run this down a minute okay I'll just let it boot into uh, its default there number one we do have other changes we could make but I thought we'd just boot it straight off now I'll just minimize this out the way so okay we're into that interactive boot mode okay it's loading it's found the network And it's telling me it can't load uh, VBox guest editions, notice follow directory, so it may not even get to a GUI. We will see what happens here, see if it fixes itself. And I hope everybody's okay while I'm doing this, so. <coughs> Excuse me. Just give this a couple of more minutes, I think. Uh, let's see what happens here. Oh, we has actually found some kind of UI for it to use. So, okay, this should throw a strange when you install it, and it has. And you've got 206 and D64. Uh, please let your language. You can restore a save to us code place and reload from my USB. So, I haven't got anything loaded from USB, so I'm just going to click next. I've had to click next in the window, of course, so I can actually press anything here. And it's in, asking me for the installation type. I want the graphical desktop, which I believe is the lunar desktop. So that is already selected for me. And I will click next. And it's asking uh, cars detected. It's on a, the official NVIDIA drivers, but um, no, I don't have any of those. So I don't need to select any of those. And it's asking me, do I want virtual box guest editions? I will actually check that and see what happens next. Well, it's asking me to uh, customise this. Now I'm not quite sure. This will initialise with these. Actually what I'll do is I will let, actually click next and let it do its own work. Uh, start the default disk installation now and I'll say yes. <coughs> okay it's clearing GTP. Stamping boot sets on ADA0. But it uses ADA rather than SDA <coughs> and uses the partitions uh, differently. As you can probably see, this says div APA 0 uh, 2 instead of SDA 1, SDA 2. <coughs> so, the system is installing, the process can take some time. So, I will be back when I have got something um, to show you. So, uh, bear with me there. Okay, I'm back, and as you can see, TrueOS is now installed, and we can save the configuration to uh, USB. And it says click finish to reboot the system, so I am going to click finish. I'll just let that reboot. Now, I'm not quite sure whether it will throw the um. CDO or not, or whether I need to reboot twice. So let me just have a look under the devices here. And no, it did not. So what I will do actually is close that and power off the machine. I will get this up here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Power off again. <laughs> I meant to just go for the settings. I didn't mean to double click that then. Okay, so we need to go to storage. 
Now we need to remove the disk. And then we can start it off from its internal. So, there we go. That's more like it. You have one second time out before we're allowed to do anything else. So, if you do need to choose something like configure boot options or select boot environment, you best be tapping those keys rapidly when you start up the system. So, anyway, it's booting into our new Freshly OS. It's using OpenRC, which is interesting for an init system. Oh, I would thought it would have been System V, being it was BSD, but there you go. Okay, it's let me suggest you drive it is um, the V box video, which I will apply because yes, this is what we are using. It says well, we'll be now be tested. Okay, let's uh, test this. Okay, complete these display settings. Yep. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, yes, we are English. Next. Uh, set my time zone. I'm not in New York or anywhere even closer. I'm actually in Europe. And if you go to Europe, London, which is what I'm looking for, I have found it. Uh, set to it and set to my name. I'm just going to put local domain. Okay. It's asking me for a root password, which I will give a complicated root password which definitely is not root and we will go with a username uh, we'll just do this and a password of and it even asks you to specify your ID if you have other files or you have a home partition even if it's a Linux one you can change the UID there <coughs> So anyway, we have all our configuration. I won't test it, but I'll just click next. Optional services. Here we can uh, disable IPv6. I won't disable it for this. I do not have IPv6. Enable into HDA polling. Enable read chat wireless, of which I have none. Enable SSH. I don't really need to do that. Enable in verbose boot. I won't need to do that either. So we'll just click next. And we'll click finish. And it's preparing to run the TrueOS first desktop wizard, first time setup wizard as well. So, <coughs> we'll see if we can make this larger in a moment. And we'll just sign into the Lumina desktop. And it's just finalising. As you can see, the guest editions do work. So what I will do is make it even bigger. There we go, we are now full screen. And on the desktop we have the App Cafe, which is their store, their repository and so on. I think they have like um, the software store you see on Linux distros. We have the control panel, we have Thunderbird, we have Firefox, which we'll get back to. We have the handbook, we have Troja, which I don't know what it is. Trojita, rather. Trojita, yeah, it could do. We have VLC, we have Lumina theme, and we have desktop configurations. Along the bottom panel here, we have our battery meter, telling me I'm plugged in, I'm on a laptop at the time. Uh, we also have the uh, device for Ethernet there, and we've got the volume at 50%, and I'm not quite sure what that last icon is, it isn't showing anything when I hover over it. So let's have a look in the menus. Okay, we seem to be pretty sparse in here. But we do have browse applications, so maybe we should just browse applications. We can manage applications, etc. So, in development, this is rather strange. Strange menu, and I'm just going to see if I can make it a bit larger. I don't think I can. Whoops. Uh, am I allowed to make this larger? I see I can make it wider, but I don't think... Oh, yes, I can. I can bring it up a bit better. Ah, that's more like it. 
although it's taken up a lot of screen oops I do apologize although it's taken up a lot of screen space now I should be able to oops didn't mean to do that either so anyway we'll look see what's in there well we have the Firefox browser and for some reason I've got managed to get Thunderbird up but while Thunderbird is up we'll see what versions we're dealing with here if we can find it we'll just click that and we'll just click that so we'll go to here and we'll go to the help about about Thunderbird let's see we are on 52.6 which is the last one known to use DC extensions as far as I'm aware okay with Thunderbird well, let's have a look at Firefox being as it's already there we may as well take a look see what version of Firefox now this was released a while back ago um, March or May or somewhere around there, there may be updates so uh, we'll see and we're on Quantum 58.02 so there are a few versions behind but as I said this has not been updated yet and there is a few iterations behind in a lot of things we have VLC as, of course I might as well go to VLC we'll click continue on that and we'll do help about 303 I imagine there is no actual version number or if there is I do not see it do you see version number? no just a lot of white white on white text groovy love the theming guys don't know what happened there but that's probably a theming issue to be honest okay uh, I'll try to as an email, IMAP email client. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we have our quick shortcuts to our documents, which opens up the, what looks to be, a file browser. Now we have external view file. So is there an about here anywhere? There does not seem to be a help, let alone help about. What about over here? No, view files, launch, show, no, open cry directory is root, which will please some people. I am not sure what this file manager, oh, it's insight. Okay, we do have found it on the taskbar, on the title bar there. It's called insight. Okay, that's cool. We'll close that. You have insight. Anyway, we've got browser applications here, but for some reason, oh, there we go. Okay, for graphics, We've got Phototonic, which is an image viewer. Uh, no, don't know much about Phototonic. But it is a, a viewer and organisation on the Qt. On the, yeah, based on the Qt build there. And it is 1.7.2.0, uh, copyright 2015. Cool. And it seems every time I come to it, I have to click on browse applications to see the applications. That is going to be a bit... Anyway, we already know about Firefox and the bird. I haven't done Troja yet, but we'll have a look at Troja. If I cancel that. No, but Cthulhu Troja cannot do much without one. No, I'm not asking you to. We just want to know this bit. A fast QT on map Qt, so everything's based on Qt so far, and it's on 0 0.7. Cool, cool. Okay, so it's telling me it's going to continue in the sys drive, which is down here. I do want to click that. Now, I'm not even sure whether I can get HTOP or something installed. Um, so, anyway. Uh, we've got settings for some reason here. I want to browse applications. There we go. We have our X11 VNC server, so people can use it. Uh, remote in is the server, so so if you're on the outside, you can remote in and use the desktop there. We have the App Cafe, which is, as I said earlier, is true OS's um, software manager. So we have installed etc pending so if we can now i do not know anything about this so i'm going to see if htop is available 
and HTOP is available. And can we install it? Yes, we can. So just bear with me. It will take up in these, so we'll do that. It says one pending, no pending. Okay, and it's put itself on the desktop. I'm just wondering if it puts everything on the desktop. While I'm here, though, before I go through the rest, we'll see what it's taking up memory-wise. Now, as you know, I gave this thing 4 gigs of RAM, and I can't seem to grab the edge. And it does come up without, actually, any uh, window decoration, which means I cannot move it. Once it's there, it's stuck there. That is going to be a pain. Well, let it settle down, and as you can see, the memory is nearly a gigabyte. 941 megs, that's quite heavy to me, being as I'm not running anything apart from HTOP inside this shell. And while we're at the shell, I'm going to go help about QT. Help about. And it is the Q terminal. Okay. But it's actually, I've got it down here, but it hasn't come up here, but it just says Q terminal 0 0.08 on the taskbar. And I can close it from there. I don't know what out of that from there, which it is not letting me. Because it's asking me if I want to exit, and there's nothing on the screen. What is going on? Okay, if I press Q, nope. Well, let me close that window. Can I press Q from there? I can, but now I can't exit it, and there's a click that X. Can I click that X? No, for see it's asking me again, exit. Yes, I do want to exit. There we go. Well that was annoying. What is going on there? Okay, maybe if someone in the comments wants to say what well, you're an idiot because you didn't do something, then fine, please do. Anyway, um we know VLC plays the only one, we've been through there, and we've got the desktop configuration, so Let's have a look at the desktop configuration. We've got things like themes, wallpaper. Let's see what wallpapers I have here. It seems they have no wallpapers apart from the one. Let's see if we can add one files, directly to the curvy, a colour. Let's see if we can find any. So, okay, so they do have others. So if I go up, if I can, up, and choose that folder there. Okay. It says one valid image, but I do not see how. Choose that. It says 10 valid images. But then again, how do I choose? I don't see how you choose. Hey, automatic, where is? Because that's there. So, okay. What am I missing? Oh, okay. So if I go to there. Okay, looks like I'm just going to have to leave it like that for a minute, because that is just strange. Let's look under Lumina theme. And Lumina theme looks a bit like XSE theme box kind of thing. And we've got darker, and we've got dusk, sand, simple, airy, and waves. Let's see what happens when I change. Okay. I am not really liking this, to be honest. Okay. Now we've got a problem because... Okay, let's go back to darker. That's better. Okay, the effects, double-click interval, etc. Our fonts. Icons, we only have three. We have material dark or material light, or the gorgeous adwaiter. Gorgeous, my 
backside. And we have four different kinds of cursors with no previews. General styles. Okay. And desktop styles, which is dark glass. Which is enabled and glass is available. So we can enable that as well. Can we apply it? What will happen? Absolutely nothing. Okay, cool. Or if it did, I did not see it. Let's see what else we have here on the browser applications. We have the theme engine, um, services manager, system update manager, for updating the system obviously, we have a task manager. <coughs> Again, it should tell us what processes or whatever are running and what memory, but I do not see any figures. But if you hold your mouse over it, it tells you what is happening. So okay, total in memory stats, total 39, wired active, okay. And our CPU usage is low. Oh, what else? Community port, Qt terminal. Okay, let's see what else. We have a uh, H-type Qt terminal, Qt terminal drop down. We have the handbook. And I do apologise if you think I'm just whacking through this. We have the system in the main control panel, which will bring up more of the system stuff rather than desktop. So you can use system controls, life preserver, and all that kind of business. Uh, so the firewall, the SL cell keys are all done from there. And the update manager, and this uh, latest check. And it's telling me my system was up to date, even though. Uh, it was only installed today. Um, I didn't ask it to install any downloads, and I don't think it actually did. So it's, I can't believe that between whenever this was released, which I think is March, I will have to check on that. And now, oops, I didn't mean to click. See, control panel. I am getting really down with this. I'm not really liking this at all, to be honest, to learn the desktop. I'm just wondering if there's others we can uh, choose as a desktop. Uh, I believe I saw um, something like Fluxbox. Okay, okay does Luna have a right click menu? It does, but... Oh, here we go, see? Why couldn't you do that? Why don't we have that on the actual start menu? That'd be better. See, this is just easier to use, for me, personally. So we can right-click and choose whatever's installed here. Our screen servers and so on, and systems, and handbook, and utilities. We have Quantum Utility, which is the compositor. We have a control panel. Okay. We have in Pandora. Pandora is not in... Let me have a look at Pandora. No, it's just a way to log in. Pandora Radio. Pandora Radio. But it's not in the wrong place. Why isn't that in multimedia? Or did I miss the point? Multimedia? No, VLC. So why is that in utilities? You see, things like this convert, confuse me. Unless Pandora is... Oh, I see. We've got the background uh, change in the background there. What? Not in. We have the mixer tray, network tray. Let's see what kind of mixer we have. And uh, people might be looking at this thinking it's Elsa. I don't believe it would be Elsa. It would be something else. It's actually running under Pulse Audio. Okay, cool. That actually surprised me. Did not think it had Pulse Audio. I didn't think it was taken over to the uh, BSD side. Right, okay, let's see if we can install something just to make this a bit more livable. Because that, I know I could have just went to thingy. So, let's search for, I don't know, anything. Uh, let's see if we have an XSCE desktop. We do. Metaport. Let's install XSCA. Yep, I do. 
We'll just let that go. Now as you can see it's downloading XSCE. I am actually gonna let this carry on. I just want to see how fast it gets done. Now I'm not on the fastest internet, so people with a faster internet may be able to uh, download a lot clearer. I just want to change desktops because this Luna is doing my heading. Um, I've used Luna on PC lots and I can't remember it being anywhere like this unless it, I'm missing something, I'm missing a trick. Um, but I have to admit this is not my kind of desktop at all. And I don't mean, for all those people out there do, that have worked on Luna and things, and I know it's based on QT but we have things like Plasma and LXQT which are just so much nicer even to look at even to look at and I know it's just a theme and I know things can be changed. Um yeah. We can uh see if any of the solar panels actually panels. Let's try default. No, default looks like Windows. But then again it would do because up there it says still Windows, so if I change that. No. Would that help me? Not really. Well, I just don't know what. Okay. Can I change anything here? Because normally I can change each color, whatever. But, um. No, I'm just going to kill that out of the way. And for some reason, now I don't know if I've killed it or whether. Oh, that is still running in the background, I assume. But did I move that to another desktop? Is there a virtual desktop and I moved it? Because if there is, I do not know where. No. And so far, I have logged in as myself. I don't believe it has asked me for any root password to install stuff, which is kind of strange as well. So it's checking, so it's downloaded all this stuff, and now it's extracting all the stuff. And when this is finished, I will exit of this desktop and hopefully from the login screen I can log into XSCE and oh my god everything gets added to the desktop okay but it says it's finished okay but oh my everything just gets added to the desktop yes do I want to leave yes please yeah log out yes please <coughs> oh excuse me, just my lighter. Okay, what choices do I have underneath this Fluxbox Lumina XFCE that'll do me? Probably ask me if I'm sure. No, just let me go straight in. Yeah. I used to config And it has placed a ton of stuff on the desktop. We have mouse pad, we have the control panel, which I assume is that one. Orange Global Time, Thunar Manager, Vios, Holy Macro. When that installed at XFC desktop, but as you can see, we do have um, a menu I can actually go through this time. But that Luna desktop, I am sorry. I'm sorry, I know I could probably make it work the way I could, but that would be just far too much work. Anyway, let me swing that back down. Anyway, that's a quick overview of TrueOS. Uh, it's fast, it's not bad at all, but that desktop and the theming, wow. 
Um, yeah, if you're going to do that, install another desktop. Luna isn't for me personally. If you like Luna, then fine, you stick with it. It's, you could probably get it to seem quite well. There's probably online places to get extra seams. I didn't look in fairness. Uh, the install wasn't too bad. It's just basically a click through install. It installed really well. Um, some of the applications are older, but I did read that there is a in the install there are ways of getting newer stuff. Uh, if I click web browser, what web browser we're going to get? It will be coming up Firefox anyway. As you can see, it's not it's not slow by any means. Um, I'm just interested now. It was using quite a lot of, um, oh, let me cancel that. <coughs> it was using quite a lot of resources, 900 meg, I believe. Okay, now I can't see what it's saying in there. Let me go set up a uh, display bar, memory bar, no. Meters, CPU, blah, blah, memory bar. So anyway, it's not actually going to show me what it's doing, but at least in the terminal now, I can actually see the window decoration to close it. So, well, what I could do, actually, uh, let's have a look at top, let's see what top's selling me, because top would tell me anyway. Anyway. Memory is 551, it's always almost half. Half. Of what I was used before. Uh, free doesn't work in BSD, fair enough. Okay, anyway, that's a quick look over uh, the True OS a BSD. Um, could you use it as an everyday worker? I suppose you could, it depends uh, on everything of what you plan to do. It's not slow if you don't like. If you want to try something rather than another Linux desktop, uh, this seems to work quite well. Um, but whether you could get any work done on it, I do not know. But that Luna desktop uh, it isn't exactly for me, it might be for somebody else, but wasn't for me. So anyway, that's true OS. Formerly B. Yeah, BSD, uh, desktop BSD or PC BSD. There we go. I knew I'd remember. Anyway, this is Ali signing off. You take care all. Bye-bye now.